Hello, another review. <laughs> right, this is actually requested on our Facebook uh, group. So if you, you know, there, there's a lesson there. If you actually want to uh, see something if you pop over to our Facebook group um, and uh, request something. But uh, one of the guys, I forget who it was now, sorry. <laughs> I think it might be an Aaron. Uh, I could be wrong. But um, yeah, re basically asked what we thought of this device. Um, and uh, so I thought, you know what, I've not heard of these, not encountered them, so uh, I'll go ahead and get one. This device, actually, for the sake of <laughs> clarity, uh, it's the SMY 60TC Mini. Anyway, without further ado, let's go down there and have a look at it closely and then come back up here. You know the drill, yeah? Right, so see you in a moment. Okay, so uh, here we have the uh, the SMY 60TC Mini. Um, I have no idea where I put the box, so we're not doing an unboxing. But basically all you get in the box anyway is a cleaning cloth and a USB cable. That's pretty much it. So let's have a little nose at the device then, shall we? So here's the back of it. It's got a nice attractive carbon fiber type finish. Uh, on the front we have this large area which is predominantly taken up by the screen. On the side we have the, uh, the fire button, the control button, and up and down control buttons. On the back, uh, he says, but I'm trying to get some focus. Yeah, there we go. On the back we have, or the bottom, shall we, shall we say, we have a USB charging port, which has got some lights on it, which indicates uh, the current charge of the device. Uh, have I got a USB cable kicking around? Yes, I have. Look at this. Hang on. Let's plug it in and we can see what happens. So we currently got a red light indicating that it's charging. Once it is charged, this light will go green. Okay, so we got that, uh, and on top we have a 510 connector, and which is a spring loaded connector. Once I find a pokey thing, so if I just uh, give this a prod, you can see that goes down quite easily. So let's focus on the back of the device then. On the back, we have no focus. There we go. So on the back it says SMY 60TC Mini, and we have a magnetic cover, which basically houses nothing more than the battery, which can easily be removed with this ribbon cable. So that's all good. Now I've not taken this apart, so I mean there's a couple of screws there, a couple of magnets there, some quality control seal or whatever. I've not bothered to take this apart at all, so I don't see any need to. But this just flops back on quite nicely. Held, it's held in pretty secure. It doesn't rattle or wobble or anything. And it's easy to remove with this little indent there. So uh, let's power it on. There we go. Actually, I'm going to take the battery out and then power it on properly because uh, you'll see the startup sequence. Okay, right. Here we go. So. Again, let's power it on. Five clicks. There it says SMY. And no atomizer detected. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Now, I have updated the firmware. A firmware uh, was released uh, in the last few days. Uh, this is currently being recorded on the 20th of September. So, yeah. As of this date, there is a new firmware available. It's a bit of a pain to find it. I had to visit their Facebook page and then follow a post on there. But basically, if you search for SMY60TC firmware upgrade, you'll find it. So what we got here then, so we got this, uh, this speedometer thing. We've got this 474. I think that's a puff counter. I think. I'm not 100%. I don't really pay attention to those sort of things. Uh, temperature readout there, uh, which is reflected in this speedometer thing. We have the date. So I've you could have just read that. It is in the American format. There's no way of changing that. And we've got the current time. Now, you'll see these icons along here. This is not a touch-sensitive screen, okay? I can touch as much as I like. Nothing's going to happen. However, if I click three times, I can use the up and down buttons to scroll through. So, that uh, is power off. I appreciate you can't really make it out on the screen that well on the video, but that is power off. So, if I give that a click... I'll get shut down, yes or no. If I go yes, there it goes power off. And again, it'll boot up. I could have just done that, I suppose, couldn't I? 
Yes, no atomizer detected, we know. So a further three clicks. And this then is a lock. Lock the button. Uh, no, I don't really want to do that. Right. And now we have settings. So here we have work mode. Let's have a quick look at that. So I can choose here variable wattage, variable temperature Celsius, NI200, variable temperature Fahrenheit, NI200, variable temperature Celsius, titanium, and variable temperature Fahrenheit, titanium. Okay. I'm going to leave it in VTF, NI200. Time setting, well, that's pretty much explanatory. Well, ish. Right, over time is 20 seconds. That means I can take a 20 second draw on this before it shuts off. You can adjust that, so let's have a look. Uh, 20 seconds is the maximum, uh, 5 seconds is the minimum. Okay. LCD auto off is 60 seconds. Out of the box, this is 3 minutes. Um, what's the minimum you can have? Five seconds. I might stick it to about 20 actually. No, I'll leave it to 60 for the purposes of this. But three minutes is the default out of the box. I think that's the maximum. Let's just check. Yeah. Okay. Auto shut down never and exit. Okay. So vapor mode is manual. If I change that to automatic, I press the button and it will just fire. I don't like that. So I'll leave that off. Date and time. Well, yeah. There we go, that's the date and time. Uh, puffs info, let's have a quick look. Oh, total puffs, 474. Total time, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. Reset puffs. Nah, you're right. And stealth mode, which basically turns the screen off when you're, when you're using it. And the final thing, no, too many clicks. One, two, three. This is basically a manual on the device, which is quite fun. Uh, click the fire button to scroll through. It tells me certain things like the input voltage is between 3 to 4.2 volts. The atomizer resistance is for a normal CAN4 coil will be 0 0.1 to 3 ohms. For NI200 it will be 0 0.1 to 1 ohm. Titanium will be 0 0.1 to 1 ohm. Output power is 30. Oi! Cheeky bugger. Right, where was I? Uh, output power is 3 watts to 60 watts. Uh, output voltage is 0 to 14 watts. Volts, sorry. Uh, temperature is 200 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 to 315 centigrade. So it tells me there that the uh, bits and bobs, what I've just basically gone through. Okay, right. So atomizer shorted, the current is greater than 30 amps. So that tells you something that this can only fire up to 30 amp load. There we go. Um, there is no um, resistance locking or anything on this. You literally just plug your atomizer in, select your mode, and away you go. So let's plug in a sub tank with an NI200 coil in it. And click the button. Is this atomizing you? Yes, it is. And fire away. That's it. That's pretty much. Uh, well, that's the interface. It's quite straightforward, to be honest. Um, build quality wise. It's very, very solid. Um, let's get some measurements, actually, whilst we're down in this view. It is pretty small. So the uh, the height of this device, he says, turn the calipers on that. The height of this device is basically, or roughly, shall we say, uh, 82 millimeters and uh, let's have a look at the depth or the width shall we say it's 46 or thereabouts and the actual depth is about 26 so uh, yeah quite a tiny device to be honest I mean let's just compare it to a a sub tank mini. Oh look, excuse the Vapor Charles TV pen. <laughs> no, go away. Right, they're getting everywhere. Right, so there's the Vapor Charles, uh, not the Vapor Charles TV pen at all. That's the sub tank mini. So it's um, it's only a little bit taller. 
There we go. Um, have I got stuff tank plus kicking around? I do, but it's just falling on the floor. Right. And the sub tank plus. There we go. So, uh, hmm. it would look quite silly with that on top. But yeah, there we go. It's, uh, it's quite a small device. Let's go back to just some vaping with it, shall we? Oh, here we are then. So is the uh, the SMY 60TC Mini. That's a bit of a mouthful. We'll just call it the, the 60, shall we? A bit thirsty. Hmm. There we go. So, yeah, as uh, as I said in the close-up section, very small device. I mean, I can easily hide this with my hand. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's quite nice. The uh, the fire button's got a nice positive feel to it. Works quite nicely. Uh, equally, the uh, the up and down buttons. Uh, I didn't really show these in the close-up, but yes, the the needle moves in real time. You can see that. There we go. So 200 there, so that's all quite good. I like to have this tank at around about 5.30. Now when we fire it, let's just have a quick look at that again. You'll see things go red and stuff. There we go. That little counter down the bottom there, that's there. That's the puff duration. Okay, and uh, then you can see the temperature going as well. For the most part, I find the temperature control works okay. Not really a problem. There's no there's no boost on it though. So I mean I've, I've gotten used to the DNA stuff recently, and uh, I do miss that boost. But it 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 does work. Right. There's one thing about this. Every so often, it takes some time to fire. That was instant. Okay. As was that. And as was that. But every so often, it just just doesn't fire instantly it's weird um, as I mentioned in the close-up section it has got the latest firmware so I, I'm getting a bit fed up with devices that re basically require a firmware update as soon as I buy the things I mean it's just an easy uh, crying out loud I, I just want to use it so yeah th there is that um, it's nice you can do it I suppose um, there's some devices that have been released recently they've got a glaring fault um, and you can update the firmware with them but you know that's out of the scope of this so yeah i mean it's it's reading yomes okay as you can see there's 0 0.11 again i should have gone over that in the close-up but uh right my big problem with this is the screen whilst it's quite nice and i appreciate you can put it in stealth mode so it doesn't fire um it appears to be a, an lcd screen i'm not 100 percent sure i don't think it's an amoled um so there's that extra drain on the battery I've no idea how much it actually drains the battery, but it's going to be something, is it? It's, it's, it's going to be battery that can be used. Sorry, Gords. It's going to be cell that can be cell time that can be used for, uh, or cell power, that can be used for powering your e-cig and not the screen. So there's that there. Um, I mean, let's just put something else up there. Let's put a dripper on it, shall we? Um, no issue with the threading on the 510 at all. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Let's put my uh, my trusty uh, Snapdragon on. Let's see if it's a fire. I've not tested it on this. Is this atomizing you? There, is asking me. Yes, it is. Single click there. Atomizer short. It's too low for it. 0 0.8. Sorry, 0 0.08. And that is a nickel coil, so it just won't fire that. So there are limitations of this device. Now, this atomizer will fire perfectly fine on the DNA 200. There we go. No problem. No problem at all. But uh, on this, it will not fire. So there's limitations in what it can do. It's probably not a bad thing because obviously that it seems to be they're er erring on the safe side of of, um, of what your 18650 can provide. Um, you know, it's not as if I've got a terrible, a terrible. Cert. Actually, no, it's not not the best selling in the world in there, but. Uh, you know, I've put in LG, LG H2s, that sort of thing, or, and, and it doesn't make any difference, to be honest. Oh, yeah, hang on. Is this atomizer new? Yeah, I'll just put the atomizer on, haven't I? 
So there we go. I mean, let's talk price then. 60 quid plus shipping I'll pay for this, which isn't bad. It's a, it's a very solid device. It's weighty. Um, it feels like a quality piece of kit. Uh, so I've got no issues with, the, with that at all. Build quality wise, it's perfectly fine. It seems to be robust. I've had this now for six days. Um, it arrived last Monday. And um, I've had no issues with it at all. I've, I've read reports online about some of them not actually turning on anymore, um, not firing anything and whatever, but I've had no issues. Which is about all I can tell you, really. So, yeah, I mean, for the money, I think it's a good it's a good device. Um, you know, you can charge it and upgrade the firmware via USB, so you don't need to take the battery out every five minutes. But you can remove the battery with ease. I mean, that is so simple to use. It's nice. I, I do like that. And, uh, you know, it sits on there quite nice and solidly. It doesn't rattle around. It's not uneven in any way. It's It's fine. Um, I think the only I, I, I dread to do these comparison things but it's very much on par with the smock not the smock is it it's the Segeli it's not the smock at all the Segeli uh, 75TC which can provide um, higher output uh, wattage um, and it does fire a lower ohm range than uh, this does so if that's important to you then maybe you want to consider the, uh, the Segeli 75 However, if you want something small, and it is small, pocketable, um, you, know, you can turn the screen off, you can use this as a stealth device quite nicely. Um, yeah, I, I've got no problems with this at all. It's, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the missus has got, I think she's got designs on pinching this off me, so uh, she's not my very own top pocket Keith, but she just whacks things in her handbag and they're never seen again. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, nice device. I like it, so, uh, <laughs> cheers.